Welcome back to It's Your Environment. I'm George Curtis, and I've got a new guest, Neil DeBall. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, George. Now, what brings you here to the uh, celebration that the Wild Ones have today in Oshkosh? This is a great event because it's a wonderful opportunity for people to get together to learn more about natural landscaping with native Wisconsin plants, how to do it, and how to have success with these beautiful plants and get a more ecological landscape for your home and yard. What is the benefit of having native plants as opposed to the kind of a turf lawn that my wife insists on having in our backyard? <laughs> there are a number of different benefits. I, what I call the four E's. First of all, you have aesthetics. If you'll excuse the uh, second uh, spelling of aesthetics from Webster's Dictionary with an E rather than an A, you have beautiful plants, fantastically beautiful plants. Secondly, the environment, because you don't have to use all these chemicals, fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides. You can basically get rid of those out of your landscape. Thirdly is energy. Okay, this amazing amount of energy goes into producing fertilizers, mowing the lawn, really a lot, a lot of uh, carbon footprint, if you will, goes into that. And finally, economics. I can save you a lot of money with these plants because you're not spending all your time maintaining them and buying stuff to take care of them. Sell the lawnmower, no more fertilizer, no runoff exactly. of fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides, uh, and we've got the beauty, and I bet it draws some wildlife besides. You're absolutely right. You get butterflies, birds, all kinds of wonderful garden visitors that have a long-term relationship with these native plants. They grew up together. And so you can bring in all kinds of beautiful songbirds and a wide variety of butterflies and really interesting moths like luna moths and cercropia moths and these really amazing creatures that will come to the native plants. And I'll bet they have a root system that keeps our moisture home instead of running down to the road and into the streams. You are absolutely right because you know your typical lawn has a rooting zone about maybe three to four inches. Okay? And when you get a big rain that moisture only goes in as far as those roots go and a lot of times you'll have like a heavy clay under that well that water just runs off. But if you look at a lot of your prairie plants, they have roots that are 5, 10, 15 feet deep and they break open that clay and create pathway, pathways for the water to get down into the soil so you have better infiltration into the soil, less runoff, and because you didn't put any fertilizers on it, you don't have nitrogen and phosphorus running off into our watersheds. And how often do you have to replant, Neil? Properly done, you should never have to replant your prairie. That's the beauty of it. These are perennials. They're native perennials. Some of them live as long as trees. There are studies of compass plant, which is this beautiful prairie plant that gets these big yellow sunflower-like flowers and show that they are over 70 years old, individual plants. Well, you're exactly in the right place on the right day because there are more than 100 like-minded people here who appreciate the uh, native plants, native birds, and things that are native, and uh, they're here to learn more. Uh, I bet you're here selling something besides. Well, we do happen to have a catalog. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and the Wild Ones is a wonderful organization that sponsors this, this program. But we have our catalog, we're a mail order company, and we sell prairie plants and woodland plants as well. And we have a lawn for your wife. We have a no mow lawn which can either not be mowed or be mowed once a month rather than once a week, and that also does not require any fertilizers. Well, really, yeah. I, I'm making a little headway. Our, our uh, turf lawn gets smaller every year, Excellent. and she's uh, getting some of those prairie plants in, and we have so many more uh, interesting birds to watch every year as that turf lawn shrinks. That turf lawn feeds nobody, does it? Very, very few. An occasional robin will get a worm. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at the, the variety, the diversity of different native plants that you can establish and the amount of wildlife that you can bring, it's astounding. Even in urban areas. A friend of mine has a quarter acre garden in an urban area in downtown Minneapolis and he gets an incredible number of birds and butterflies just to come to that urban landscape. So this is something that people can do on a small scale even if they have just half a city lot. Absolutely. Uh, it all helps with the beauty and the quality and the ecology Absolutely. and it's, it's fun. And you can create gardens that rival any English garden using native plants properly arranged in a proper setting and absolutely stunning. Tell us a little bit about uh, how somebody can contact your company and how you can help them plan their own. Sure. Probably the best thing is for them to call and get one of our catalogs. And you can call us at 800-476-9453. Or you can go to our website, www.prairienursery.com. That's P-R-A-I-R-I-E nursery. Because it's easy to misspell prairie. <laughs> P-R-A-I-R-I-E nursery.com. And there's a ton of information on our website and in our catalog. And if you have questions, just call us because we're happy to help. And you're located over in Westfield, which isn't very far from the far. people who are watching. What would we see if we came over to your place in Westfield? We have a new display garden and retail center. 
that has about, oh, about an acre of display gardens that is really stunning, especially from about June on into October. And we have a plant sale uh, in, in June. And our first tour, we have two tours, one in June and one in August. The first tour is on uh, June 20th. And the second one is on August the 15th. And we have a big plant sale on June 20th. How many years have you been coming to this particular celebration? Well, that's, that's a good question because I can't remember. All I know is that I was their first speaker when they started this organization back in the 80s, I think. So. Well, this is the 13th annual seminar uh, for the Wild Ones. And uh, it really got started here in Wisconsin and now it's traveled the United States. Absolutely, it's a great organization and they've just done such a wonderful job to publicize the benefits of planting native plants and putting a little bit of the environment back together. And it happens just about every January. So people who watch the show should plan on it for January of next year. Come, uh, a lunch is served, so many people to talk to yep. who share your interest in the out of doors. You can learn, you can buy things, uh, there, are, there are books. A lot of good or, books. Or just listen to the speakers who yep. are really amazing people. And some really good speakers. And most importantly, I think, is everybody here helps everybody else. So if you have a question, somebody else might have already done it and tried it and they can help you. Well, thanks for your help today, Neil. Oh, my pleasure, George, thank you. There are lots of reasons why our water and our air are cleaner today than they were 20 years ago. And you'll learn many of those reasons if you associate with the people at the Wild Ones. I urge you to join the Wild Ones. What an active group of people who enjoy native plants, native landscaping, and the birds and animals that appreciate it as well. Thank you for paying attention to this particular message today and consider joining the wild ones. They're working for all of us. I'm George Curtis.